Good night to you. I'm hoping you're having a fantastic Monday. It is, it is a Monday, right? <laughs> Wherever you are. My name is Prosper Taruvinga and my mission is to actually help entrepreneurs like yourself to actually set up reliable and lucrative businesses um, that are profitable and enjoyable. If you're watching this segment of the video, you're actually watching a video that's been recorded live on Facebook. So essentially, I want you to type in the number two so that we actually know, um, you know, the, the people that are tuning in right now. So um, if you're in Melbourne right now, it should be uh, past your lunch time. So that should be all right. I see uh, Nicole has just tuned in. Anna Osherev has just tuned in. Anna, you're actually watching this live. I do that right from the start so that um, people get to understand, I mean, so that I get to understand what time people are watching, um, you know, the video. Right. So for those that are tuning in, thank you so much for your time. I'm hoping that um, you're well rested and it's a good week uh, for you. I really wish you a wealthy week um, ahead. Basically, my job is really simple. I help people like yourself start, scale, and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And the reason why we stick around here every day at 2 p.m. AEST is um, so that I can help you navigate, um, you know, your online strategy um, using my four-step system, all right? So for those that are not well-versed with the four-step system, it is the online prosperity blueprint that would help you capture the right kind of clients, um, create the right kind of content, and convert um, that audience and also connect um, you know, with the audience that you want to be demanding money off of. I see Nicole Saunders, you're watching this live, my love. Hope you've been fantastic and you're roaring like a tiger. <laughs> I like that about your own blueprint. And I see Dean Sprague has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my man, for tuning in. Right. So, you know, right now, a lot of people are really being confused about this whole digital marketing landscape. Um, you know, when Facebook yanked um, the, um, you know, the chain and then they stopped, you know, they stopped, um, what do you call it? They stopped the reach of pages in our newsfeed. That, that sort of disorientated a lot of businesses. And Dean, yes, you're watching this live. I am live. All right. So that disorientated a lot of businesses and, um, so many people are still confused. I know my, some of my clients, their crying foul is because most of their online strategy was based on them uh, being present on Facebook. But that's the reason why we're here so that we can help you, um, you know, navigate the, the, the whole online space. And also just to really, really ask does any of you guys have a social media strategy? If you've got one, can you type in the number one? If you've got a social media strategy, if you don't, uh, if you're working on one, can you type in the number two? If you need help working on one, can you type in the number three? That would just give me an understanding of who is actually, um, you know, watching this show right now and what do they possess? Come on, guys. It's 2018. Do you know what I mean? And if you're a small business doesn't yet have a digital marketing strategy or a, a social media strategy, by now you're actually being, um, you know, you are already behind the competition, all right? You are way beyond the competition. Dean, can you also just type in the comments, what is it that you actually do so that I understand maybe you need one or maybe you don't need one, all right? So that's the reason why I've put together this video. Um, it's got a list of, you know, some of the digital marketing strategies that I actually use that will get your business headed in the right direction, all right? So I want you to keep watching this so that you can learn more um, of some of the essential online marketing strategies that will actually put your business ahead of the competition because if you're not doing this, guess what? Your competition is actually doing it. And if you don't believe me, tag your competitor in this video and then you'll see why I'm talking about that, all right? Because at the end of the day, what's actually happening on the market is if your competition is giving your audience or the people that you're trying to reach out to a certain service or a certain way of dealing with them, guess what happens? Guess what happens? Your audience and automatically anticipate that you, they can also get it from you. Now, if you are not giving it out, it's going to be a problem. Now, Dean says, need a strategy, mate. We can chat later. Absolutely. And you can see what I created here. I created um, a four-step system that you can literally 
plug and play into whatever it is that you're doing because everyone is out there looking for the right kind of client. Everybody out there is looking to engage that audience. And once you've engaged that audience, you want to convert them into lasting customers. And then from there, you're going to need referrals from them and also ambassadors and advocates for your work. So, um, you know, just uh, type in the word blueprint there, Dean, so that I can actually shoot you through um, this blueprint. It all happens automatically. Don't ask me how it all works out. Okay, so the first thing that you really need to do, I know every one of you guys is small to medium. No one is grossing anything above 3 million a year. So I can say you literally need to engage in what is called local search marketing. All right. So when people are around the corner from you or they're looking for a yoga instructor near them or they're looking for a personal trainer near them. They're looking for, um, you know, a, 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 a marketing or a VA near them. You need to be found where your audience is actually searching. All right. You need to be seen where your audience is actually searching because right about now, nothing rivals a, a, a solid local search marketing strategy for your small business. Guess how I, I know that. Because every time you're out and about, you just go, Siri, um, what's the nearest restaurant? Siri, what's the nearest ice cream parlor? Siri, what's the nearest whatever shop you're looking for? That is all local search marketing. And when you are driving around, you just type into Google, um, maybe ice cream shop near me and Google directs you to the one that is closest within your vicinity. Now, can you imagine if your business could be found by people that are lingering around your area of business right there? Because all of that food traffic or all of those people that are within a hundred um, sort of meter or like a, a five kilometer radius, they could be people that are actually actively searching for your kind of or, or your kind of product or service, but they won't be able to see you in the newsfeed. So local search marketing is where it's at. All right. How many of you guys are practicing any local search marketing tactics? If you're doing that, can you type in the number one? If you are thinking about it, can you type in the number two? If you have no idea what I just said, can you type in the number three? Because I really want to make sure that we're understanding this. Because let me tell you something. At the end of the day, people are getting bombarded and they're getting very confused as to how to actually proceed, what strategy to use. And I see Anna is actively doing local search marketing. So that's that's pretty good for you there because nothing rivals local search uh, if you've got a solid local search marketing strategy for your small business. And I see for you, um, you're running, um, a, a, um, is it a, a, a co-op place for people to work in that people can come in? So that also really needs uh, local search because what, what local search really is, is it, it, it's marketing that consists of you claiming and optimizing your business online listings and it actually shows up in relevant searches. So if you've got Google My Business, if it's actually clearly, um, you know, labeled what your work hours are, what you actually do, who you do it for, people will come around to you. Let's say you own a local barber shop and somebody really needs desperately needs a haircut or needs to get their hair done, all they're going to do is hair salon near me. And if your business is listed on Google or is listed on all the other search engines locally, you will be found there. Do you know what I mean? So those are really relevant local searches that you don't want to miss out on. Okay, so there's a lot of elements that come around with, you know, local search engine optimization. But when it's done right, it can actually put your business on the on the, on the local map and it's local branding that you're also taking advantage of there. So it is one thing that you can actually start utilizing and doing right now because your local customers are the people that are going to be loyal. They're the ones that can actually pedal, um, what do you call it, uh, word of mouth, etc., etc. So you need to make sure they know of your own existence within their neighborhood. You know what I mean? Because they are also going to be maybe searching for your, your products and services. All right. And um, once you've branded with the people that are around, you know, it's it's now easier for you to branch out because now you have ambassadors. So um, for a lot of people, local search is complicated. You know, the results won't happen overnight um, or, you know, you can't just do it once and then forget about it. 
it is best left to people that are actually actively involved with search engine optimization, which is what I do every single day of my life. So if it is something that you need help with, can you type in the number two so that I can help you optimize your business for local search engines and also, you know, local directories, all of those things, um, you know, that would help you get found by your audience. Well, one, when they're, you know, actively uh, searching right there. And, um, how many of you guys have optimized your website for mobile? Can you type in the number one if your website is optimized for mobile? The number two if you are almost about to do it. The number three if you need help with optimizing your um, your website for mobile. Um, I just really need to see the level of um, you know um, of intensity that you you guys really have when it comes to uh, marketing and branding your businesses now if you're optimized for mobile please type in the number one if you're thinking about it please type in the number two if you need help with it type in the number three all right because everyone else right now you're probably watching this video on mobile um right now almost 90%, I'm not quite sure, don't quote me on this, but 90% of the people that I see personally out there are utilizing a mobile phone, which means they're accessing internet, you know, using a mobile phone. So if your website has got all the bells and whistles for a desktop, not a lot of people are really using, um, you know, the, the, the desktop or the laptop while they're out and about. So if your phone is, uh, your, your website is not, um, you know, optimized for mobile, you're missing out on a lot of traffic right there. So have a look and see if it is something that you need help with. And if you really, really need help with optimizing your website for uh, mobile, type in the number three and I'll shoot you through uh, something that you can look at right now to diagnose to see um, if people can actually view your page uh, okay for for while they're searching, you know, while they're on their own, on their mobile phone. You should also, one other thing that a lot of people don't realize is Google is a search engine. So you should, um, you know, optimize your website, first of all, for humans and also for search engines. All right. So you should optimize your, 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 your website in a way that people can actually read it. And also that the, the, the web crawlers on Google can also read it, you know, some people's websites that I talk to right now, um, they still have a website that was created in 1997. Between 1997 and 2017, there has been almost three changes with the Google algorithm. So if your website has not been changed in the last three years, you really need to take a look at that, all right? Or if you created it within the last two years, then you should be fine, all right? So... I mean, if you, you haven't created it, you know, you haven't changed it in the last three years, it's time to fix it, man. It is time to fix it. I mean, it's 2018, you know, for all we know, we could actually be having phones that are just, you know, genetically or, I don't know, modified to just stick in our ears and we don't have to worry about even carrying a, a, a piece. It's all coming. Have you seen Apple's, you know, all, you know, um, earphones that you carry around all the time that are cordless? What is stopping them from actually creating something that you can insert into your ear that stays there and you don't have to worry about it? Because right about now, look at this. If your website is not optimized for humans or for search engines, customers are getting impatient. You know, we always talk about, um, you know, the attention span is getting lower and lower and lower, right? People now want instant results. So if they load up your website and it takes more than three to four seconds, they're already swiping right, looking for something else that loads up a bit faster. We now have so much shorter attention spans. So if your website is, first of all, uh, clunky or unattractive, it's slow to load, it's confusing to use, people are just going to leave it. And then they check out what your competition has to offer. You know, so you want to make sure that first of all, it's mobile friendly, it's easy to use, it's easy to read, and people can easily navigate it. The one thing that a lot of people have as a big, big problem is we are constantly, as business people, we're constantly looking at our website. We constantly know what it is that 
we are supposed to be doing. We constantly know what the website does, what to press. But if somebody has only three seconds to look at it and then make a decision, are you giving them the opportunity, the right kind of information or the right kind of, um, you know, buttons to press in order for them to go further, either to book a call with you or to do whatever transaction you want off of them when they land on your website. So make sure that your website is loading quickly and because... You know what I mean? Customers will abandon the site, especially if you've got a shopping cart on there. Customers will leave it if they have to go through hoops and, you know, in order for them to, to make a purchase. Make it as easy and as seamless for them as possible and make sure that your site is really, really easy to navigate. You know, because we're dealing with a really small screen. So if you've got words that are spanning, you know, across the page and you've got really big pictures that take up the whole screen, guess what? People don't want to see that. And don't also forget to, to add really, really clear call to actions. Do you know what I mean? And, 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 and tell your customer exactly what to do. This is what I have. This is what I want you to do. And this is why it's safe to do it with me other than my competition. You know, for example, you, 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 you can put a button at the header of your main page that says get directions or call today. That's an instant call to action because people are on their mobile phones. They will just easily click that button and then talk to somebody and make sure on the other end of the line, there's somebody like yourself who really knows what they're talking about or not somebody who's just woken up. People have no patience for you to get yourself together. You always got to be ready. That's why, like what Will Smith says, don't try and say you need to be prepared. You always got to be ready so that you don't have to get ready. You know, you always got to be ready because now we live in a 24 hour global village. You know, you need to start thinking out of the 24 hour box. You never know where you you know, uh, clients are going to be searching you from and what time they find you and what time they need to sprack and Z with you. So mobile optimization is also very important. Like I said, right now, if you're on a computer or if you're looking at a computer or facing a computer, press the button F12. All right. And then it will shrink your website so that you can see how it looks like online. All right. You're right. Um, Anna says, love the point about why it's safe to do so. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Anna, look at this. Anyone with a t-shirt and, and a pair of sweatpants can start a business these days. You know what I mean? So you and me have worked so hard to get to where we're at right now. And, you know, we want to make sure that our clients know that we've got the social proof. We've got the goods and they are not just going to be throwing money, um, you know, into something that's not going to work for them and they're not going to get value. So, yeah, you need to show the customer that, yes, it is safe to actually do business with me. And that's why you need to have SSL certificates, all of that stuff. We could always talk about if you book a call with me and then, um, you know, we can figure out how we can actually help you by actually helping you. The reason for this show today is to just show you or expand your mind a little bit of what is possible and what you can actually do in order for you to actually be seen by your audience since Facebook has sort of stopped the, 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 the reach of um, pages, um, you know, you know, business pages in the newsfeed. All right. So about the mobile optimization and stuff like that, Google will actually penalize a website if it's not optimized for, mo for, for, for mobile. You know, and the penalty is you're not going to show up in the search engines because they know that at least 92% of their traffic is coming in from a mobile phone. And I just want to um, indulge you right now. Can you type in the number one if you're watching this show on a mobile phone? Type in the number two if you're using an iPad and type in the number three if you're sh watching this on a laptop or type in the number four if you've put me onto a big screen. Because you can do that. You know that, right? If you're in front of a smart TV right now, you can actually start watching this show on a big screen. It's pretty cool. Um, Julian Van Dival. How's it going, my man? Hope you had a fantastic weekend right there. Right. See, it's mobile. Okay. So that's where your, your audience is also viewing from, from the mobile phone. All right. So also, once your, your, your aesthetics, your website is looking cool, it's looking all mobile friendly, Take advantage of what is called link building. All right. Link building is, 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 is something that 
a lot of people don't understand. Take it as if you're going to be the president of your state, all right? And then you have a lot of people voting for you. So every link that is coming from a credible site is like a vote for you. So the more you get votes from people that are from credible sites, the higher the ranking you get when it comes to ranking your page. All right. Is that is that an easy understand, um, um, you know, um, uh, explanation to link building? Because people forget or people are tricked into getting links from dubious sites, which are not going to help them at all. You need very strong links that are coming from dot edu sites, dot gov dot au. All of those credible sites or from university, um, you know, sort of websites that actually say, yes, I think Julian's website is credible. I think Luke Moroni's website is credible. Then you can show it to the rest of the people. Because Google, if you want to understand it, it's like a library. Every time somebody knocks on Google's door through a search and is asking for a website or is searching for something, Google has to present that person with content that comes in the, in the, in the way, um, you know, of a website in the same way that a librarian gives you a book. So they want to make sure that the book that they're giving to you is a good book. It's going to, you know, satisfy whatever questions you might have. And that's what Google also does. So you need to engage in really legitimate white hat link building. All right. Um, uh, Nicole says, have you got time to chat about public figure uh, Facebook profile? Absolutely. We can have a chat. Um, I'll send you through a link to my calendar so that we can quickly have a chat and find out what it is that um, you are asking regarding that. Okay. So what I'm talking about link building, these are the votes that your website is getting from other websites. So you get these through blogging, you get these uh, through guest blogging. Every time somebody mentions your website on their own website or when you, your, when, when you, your website is mentioned by credible sites like Facebook, ETC, Google uses that as credibility. All right. So link building is a great way to actually show your search engines or Google or Bing or Yahoo that your website is actually popular. Every link that you get is like a vote. So if you build links the right way, you know, you, you, you're getting very high quality links rather than a, a bunch of low quality spam links. Because a lot of people just get spam links from India and most of them are linking to like porn sites. Those are not going to help you at all. You need relevant blogs and you need relevant uh, links that are building, you know, your the credibility of your own website. And it will actually prove to Google that your small business website is relevant and is of high quality. So, so whatever you're doing right now, if you have been doing stuff with links and linking, please find out from your web developer or web designer, are they using black hat tricks or are they using white hat, um, you know, tricks right there. And you can get your links from local news sites. Um, they might run an article about you. The moment they mention your, your site there, that's a vote. So find local business owners or, or bloggers that are willing to, to link to your website as well. And you can also return the favor by writing blogs about them, um, you know, on your website so that you can, you know, share the juice links or you can do interviews with people. And every time you put their website on there, they will also, you know, reciprocate by mentioning your website, which is also yet another vote for you. Right? Now, Nicole Sander says people think they they don't need a website. Well, those people, I don't know wh what world they live in because right now, if you really, really look at it, Facebook has sort of cut the reach of, um, you know, uh, 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 um, the profile pages. If that's what you're asking and you're thinking you don't need a website, then I also think that if you're dealing with website as your full marketing strategy, it's like building a house on quicksand, you know, during the summer. All right. When it starts raining, it's going to it's going to sink in. You know why? Because Facebook is borrowed audience, borrowed ground, borrowed 
territory. So if you don't have your own platform to bring people back to, how are you gonna have credibility? How are you gonna how are you gonna have anything to show that who are you as a person? Because the one thing about Facebook is you have to continuously repeat yourself. For people to understand who you are. Look at what the Facebook newsfeed is like, Nicole. You've got your auntie, you've got your partner, you've got, you know, somebody who's putting out an advert, and then you've got your profile or whatever, you know, um, profile page that you have. People are not coming to the internet to, 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 to see what you're up to. They're coming to see what Sally or what Auntie Sally's cats are up to, people that they actually know. And Facebook has caught on to that. So if unless maybe the your audience is people that live within your household, nobody cares, all right? So you should actually, I mean, make people see things differently, but I feel like if you don't have a website, you actually don't have a business, you actually don't have a platform, because that's what you, you're supposed to be having as a business, a platform that gives you the authority to sell. How do you sell to people if you don't have your own website, okay? Um, one other thing that people should really look at is, do you know the keywords that people type in to search for your kind of work? Can you just type in one keyword that you think people are using to, um, you know, to, to type your, uh, to find you maybe on Google, Bing or Yahoo? Can, or even if people are, are using to ask Siri to get to your business, what would they have typed in the search engine in order to get, um, you know, to where you are? Because, Keyword research should actually be a mandatory um, part of every small business, um, you know, in your digital marketing strategy, because the way you're going to write your content, the way you're going to reach out to your audience, if you don't know what they say um, about your business or how they find you or what words they use about your business, then you've lost them. I keep talking about this story about a... Um, about a dentist here in Manda, I think by now he's heard the message. Every time I walk past, there's a sign outside that says, new patients welcome. Guess what? I am not a patient. He might call me that, but I don't identify myself as a patient. All right. Are you walking around saying, oh my God, I'm a patient. I'm looking for a dentist. No, I'm a human being that has a sore tooth. All right, so if you're not speaking to your audience in the language that they actually understand or in the way they see the world or in the way they actually view themselves as, you've lost them. Do you understand what I mean? So you need to really know what keywords are your audience using to get to find you, even on Facebook, even on whatever social media, what hashtags are they using to reach you? Because if you don't know that, then you might as well close shop, you know? Because you can use this business keyword for so many things. You know, because right now you might be spraying and praying to your audience. If you don't know the keywords that they use to find you, I suggest that you stop whatever you're doing and actually go and use tools that will help you find out what are people saying about the business that we are presenting to them. You know, and a great way to find out exactly what terms people are using to search, you know, for your services or your business products or um, or whatever it is that you do. There's a there's tools like, you know, AdWords, Key Planner. All right. You need to get on top of that. Uh, Google Trends, what people are actually typing into the search engines. You could also use that to create content that's relevant. There's also um, 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 a tool called Keyword tool.io that will also show you what people are actually typing into the search engines so that they can find um, the type of work that you're doing or even some search recommendations every time you 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 re you hit a block find out if you're a dentist find out what people are typing into google and then use that to create your content you know Every time Google tries to complete a search for you on Google, that means somebody has tried to type that into Google, you know, or people are searching for all of those boxes. Those things help you figure out what else are people looking for that I can be of service to my audience, you know, and then you can insert those keywords into the pages of your website. Just try and make it as natural as possible so that it makes sense within the content that you're putting out in your blog posts. 
you know? And one of the things that I don't see a lot of people doing is actually asking for email addresses, um, you know, as soon as somebody lands on their page. Can you tell me how many people have an email strategy within their business? Type in the number one if you've got an email strategy. Type in the number two if 2018 is the year that you're going to think about it. Type in the number three if you need help with an email marketing strategy. You see, because I can't remember the last time I went through... Um, a line in a retail store or something like that, and the cashier didn't even ask me for my email address. It's become so natural. Now, if the people are coming to your website, maybe people are busy. Maybe somebody is, you know, fixing dinner, or they're trying to wipe their daughter's butt or whatever it is, because I'm talking about myself, or they're in public transport. Get their email address so that you can always send them relevant information depending on what landing page they landed on your, on your site. Because people are just coming to your website and you're not doing anything about them or retargeting them or trying to get them to get back to you. That's a waste of advertising money if you're advertising to get those leads. You know? So, yeah, it's easy. It's like a check-in, check-out. Ask your customers for their email address. And once you have your customer's email address, respect that. Don't just spray and pray just because, you know, they've given you the, 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 the email address. You now have to seek permission from them by being relevant, by engaging them, by actually educating them and inspiring them while providing value and positioning yourself as a person that can serve them with whatever product you've got on there. Because if you don't, there's always online reviews, you know. And online reviews, you can't, you can't change them. So don't spam people, but make sure you're being relevant. And that's where it helps to actually own a space within the, the online space. Because if you have people's email addresses, you, they've given you permission to sell to them. You know? And then one other thing, if you still are adamant that Facebook is the thing for you, just give Facebook Live a try. You know? Try and if you are doing it maybe twice a week, Try and increase your live videos. You know why? Because people really now want to communicate. People really now need to see if you're the right kind of person who can sort out their needs. They need you to help them by actually helping them. So it can be a great way to actually add that human element to your small business marketing strategy. In any case, what are you too busy doing? Chasing shiny objects instead of creating and relating to your audience. You know, so all of those people that, you know, one, one thing that I want to advise you to do is when you're at a live event or at a gig, try not to get too excited and go live because people are expecting to see you. And one thing happens is, or oh, I'm talking about me personally, and then they don't see you. They see other people. Then automatically you've given that person, they're watching all the credibility and that's it. You've lost that person. Only try and go live when it's you or it's something to do with you. Do you know what I mean? Because that person also has people that can take a live video off of them. So, you know, it's, it's an option that enables you to connect with your customers in a more personal level. So don't abuse it. Do you know what I mean? Just like right now, I'm really being considerate of what people are saying and, and also engaging them in a, in, in a certain way. You know, and as a bonus, if you go live on Facebook or maybe on Instagram, your followers will actually start getting notifications that tell them that you're live. So don't take advantage of that, because if people notice that your, quality, your, your content is not valuable, then they're just going to skip. And the more your videos don't get seen, the more Facebook puts them down the, um, um, you know, the, 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 um, the ranking order. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. I really hope this video is going to help you because a lot of people really are lost right now as to what to do, how else to reach out to their audience. And I really want to help you by actually helping you because all these strategies that I'm talking about, these are just top of the cuff type, um, you know, stuff that, you know, when we sit down, I really want to personalize it and, um, you know, with you so that we can actually help you be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Type in the number three if you've watched it up until now and you really have questions that you want me to personally answer pertaining to your business. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your day.